Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Philip Sadiq Show. We have director James Ponsold here. Got it right? You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> We're going to talk about his new film, The Spectacular Now. And I'm not going to say too much about it. He's going to explain it, but I'm telling you, it is... Okay, we just, you, you guys looking? See it, see it, see it, see it, see it, see it. <laughs> Welcome to the show, my friend. Thank you very much. All right. Sure. Tell us about the film, how did you get into directing it, and then, all, of course, the stars, the actors. Yeah. Uh, the Spectacular Now started as a really great novel by Tim Tharp. It was nominated for a National Book Award. And then Scott Neustadter and Mike Weber, who wrote 500 Days of Summer, they adapted the script. And at its core, it's a, love st it's a teenage love story. But yes. it's a little more complicated than most stories about young people, and it sort of sort of dignifies the experience of what it is to be a teenager, as opposed to cheapening it, making it sort of just you know crass and cynical. Um, and I had a movie that was at Sundance in 2012 called Smashed, and the producers uh, of this film saw that movie, got me the screenplay for the Spectacular Now. I fell mm -hmm. in love with it. We met, and sort of we decided we need to make a movie. And five months later, we were in Athens, Georgia, shooting. Wow, yeah. shooting schedule. It was fast and furious. We uh, arrived in Athens, I think, in early June. We were shooting mm -hmm. by August 1st. We shot for 25 days. Wow. Yeah. Whoa. Now, what was about the script that attracted you to say, okay, I'm, I, I want to be involved with this, as opposed to those scripts you might get to say, oh, well, that's, I'm not going to do that. I mean, I think it, it made me feel something. I mean, that was the biggest thing. It made me feel something, and it just constantly surprised me in really subtle ways. It's, it's, it's a realistic film, it's naturalistic, but the story and the characters never did exactly what I thought they would do. You know, mm -hmm. it's, it's, a, it's a really charismatic 18-year-old kid who loves to party. He meets, he meets a girl who's, you know, not part of the quote-unquote popular crowd. Yeah. And, you know, there's a meet-cute, but it's not about some manic pixie dream girl saving a guy. It's not about him saving her. In fact, he, he's kind of a bad influence on her, but you kind of, you, you still like them mm -hmm. and you like the experience that they're, it feels like what they're having is, um, you know, their lives are being changed by each other. Um, right. I'm really honest with you. Yeah, it seems like that, even though, like, say, he's, she's a bad influence on him, they have something each other they need. Yeah. Him strengthening her. Her, okay, look, I can help you get to this, you know. There are a couple of scenes in there. Let's get to the actors, and then we'll talk about one specific scene where everyone thought the girl was just so innocent. Mm -hmm. But she just, we... Okay, we're going to go to the, just the scene right now. There's an intimate scene, and they're sitting on a bed, and what's her name? Um, Amy. Amy. Yeah, okay. She just got, let's take off our shirts. I'm like, <laughs> where did this come from? I'm like, she's a nerdy girl. What happened? <laughs> wow. You know, I mean, that, that scene, or I guess what that scene represents about the value mm -hmm. system of the film is part of what excited me about it. Not not in a pervy way, but, yes. <laughs> but, but in as much as, you know, I think a lot of films about young people, like women, for instance, aren't allowed to be sexually proactive or to enjoy, in, yes. enjoy sex. Or, or in a wild, a wild way, you know, just rip it off. In, in a cartoonish way, but yeah. it's very natural for young people to mm -hmm. be sexual and to be excited about each other. And I think the film... I think that scene and you know the the honesty with which the actors you know kind of um, perform in that scene it just it doesn't feel like it's taking advantage it doesn't feel like it's objectifying them it feels as awkward and clumsy and kind of funny mm -hmm. as most I think a lot of people's first sort of sexual encounter right it was a very <laughs> funny and in, intense scene you did it very well oh, you thank did you. It very well now actors was it Shalane Woody Woodley? Yeah, Shalane Woodley. Uh -huh. Yeah, she was um, she was the first actor that was kind of involved with the film. I had heard mm -hmm. even before I got the script that she had read the script and really liked it, and I had loved her in The Descendants, playing George Clooney's daughter, and just thought she was the one underwater. Yep. When the mom. Oh my. Oh yeah. That's why I said I've seen her before. Yeah, she was nominated for a Golden Globe for that. Crap. Yeah, and she's. You know, she just reminds me of a throwback to like a young Sissy Spacek or Deborah Winger or like Barbara Hershey. She's yes. just, she's young, but she's really smart, really honest, like has an acute BS detector. And you know, she's, she's complicated, it feels real. She actually feels like mm -hmm. a girl next door and not like a model pretending to be a girl next right. door. Right, prom queen, Brie Larson. Yeah, Brie Larson, you know, I, I, I've loved Brie as a performer for years. I loved her in like Rampart playing Woody Harrelson's daughter. I loved her in, um, <laughs> 21 Jump Street, you know, which is like a totally different movie. She's, right. you know, in a movie with like funny guys. She can like, you know, go, you know, hang with the best of them. And she reminds me of like a throwback to some like Madeline Kahn. Like she's beautiful and strong actress. But she's hilarious. She's a great comic and just, and she's surprising. She's sort of, she, 
you know, she is a, a beautiful, like, blonde actress. Yes. And, you know, in, in a different film, that, that, that type of part of sort of mm -hmm. the ex-girlfriend would be very two-dimensional. Right. And would be just, you know, essentially... She's fully but, realized. She's fully realized. She has a life beyond this film. And you realize that she's someone... Yeah, she was in a relationship with our main character, and she grew out of him. She grew past him. Yes. And she has a life entirely outside of this film that is... Right. She has ambitions that eclipse our main character's ambitions. Yes. Miles Teller. We were watching, we were like, we've seen this guy before. Click, 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 click. Project X. I remember him in Project X. He was a big man on campus. Yep. Yeah, yeah. he was Project X. I mean, he was in Rabbit Hole with Nicole Kidman. Um, he was in the remake of Footloose playing the Chris Penn role. He's, you know, he's a young guy, but he has that sort of young, sort of John Cusack, Tom Hanks quality where he just feels like a regular kid, but he's just wildly charismatic, really funny, and and really emotional, real, really grounded. He can handle, you know, he heavy subject matter. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, his face. We're talking about his face. There's a lot of character. Yeah. In his face. Yeah. Look at this. Yeah, no, Miles, Miles has lived a lot, you know, I mean, he's talked about this before, you mm -hmm. know, in interviews, things like that, but he, you know, he was in a car accident a few years ago, um, this sort of, I think he told me that, like, in 99 times out of 100, the doctor told him he, he someone would have died, but he, he lived, and, wow. you know, and he really carries that with him, and I think the mm -hmm. actors that I really like, I mean, to his credit, Miles has no vanity, he's just like, that's part of who he is, and that's what I love about him, like, whether someone has a scar, if someone has acne, if someone has lines on their face, I don't think you need to airbrush that or put makeup on it. That's part of what makes no. it unique and it makes it feel yeah. more real and that's what I love as a film goer. Yeah, we enjoyed watching him because of that. It yeah. made us think, okay, he's a party guy. Okay, uh, where did he get those scars and was he partying? And then when he goes to his backstory yeah. on his dad giving him alcohol at age six here and then he's like, yeah, no, he feels he, he feels in life, and I think on the screen like a kid that, mm -hmm. that you could know, you know, who you like love hanging out with, and then at a certain point when everyone goes home for the party, he's still partying, and you start to feel like, oh, yeah. I don't know how it's gonna turn out for that guy. Yeah. Your heart goes out to him. Mm -hmm. you know? Now, weather wise, in Georgia, it gets. I have people in Georgia. It gets hecka hot. It, how was yeah. it filming it? All of that. Eat. It was it was it was it was hecka hot, as you said. Uh, to your words, yeah. um, it was insane. You know, I'm from Georgia, so there's part of me that was like, "This is gonna be great. I'm gonna take this crew down to like the dirty south in the summer. Show what it's all about." We shot in August. I will never do that again. <laughs> it was it was there were some days I'm not making this up where it was 105 degrees without even the heat index. It was mm -hmm. insane, and so we shot in the hottest month of the year, and it was. It was brutal, but I think you, you feel it. I mean, I love films where mm -hmm. you feel the season. Right. It feels hot. You see people sweaty. Yes. <laughs> and it feels warm, and it's green, and it's lush, yes. and, it's, and, it's, and it's there. It's not just sort of like Canada faking for somewhere in America. It feels like a real place. Yes, it does. Yeah. And I was there because I've been to Georgia, too, and yeah. I was like, wow, that is heck of hot. And you see sometimes bugs in the back lying around. Holy Toledo, this guy's really got this thing nailed down. Yeah, no, I mean, there's even the first time that Miles and Shailene's characters kiss. There's, you know, they, they kiss, and then Miles sort of has a bug in his ear, and he kind of like has to swat it off, and he's just in the moment reacting. But I think it's just, it's sort of a funny little moment that just makes the film feel, I don't know, more more real. I'm glad you guys didn't reshoot that. Yeah. Because that's part of that realism. It's like, yeah, in Georgia, you're going to have bugs flying around you. Yeah, well, I mean, people, you know, I don't think life is, I think movie moments, sometimes people have the wrong idea of what a movie, movie moment is. They're mm -hmm. not sort of these unnecessary, perfectly realized museum pieces. They're, they're our most beautiful and graceful and sort of memorable emotional moments. Sometimes they're laced with, with humor, with yeah. pain, mm -hmm. with whatever, and I like those moments that are just really muddy, kind of. Yes. Yeah. Tell us about um, Miles's mom. Yeah, Jennifer Jason Lee. Yes. Yeah. Um, spectacular. Yeah, no, I mean, um, I've loved, I mean, if you're going to make a movie about young people, sort of, you have to be aware of, obviously, those archetypal films of, I guess, the 80s, John Hughes movies, and then yes. Fast, Time, Fast Times at Ridgemont High, mm -hmm. um, that Jennifer Jason Lee was in, was sort of a big, big one for me, and I've always loved her, and whether it's that, or Hugs Like a Broxy, or Rush, and she's just one of the great, great actors, and she's brilliant, and strong, and, um, you know, she just brought... You know, she's, she's a supporting character in the film, but again, like with all my favorite actors, what she does with the scenes, you feel like she has an entire life, a very complicated life, mm -hmm. off, off the screen, and it just makes the film feel like it exists outside, you know, the 95 minutes that the film exists. Yeah, and I mean, her character as a mom, you know, I was, she protects the son yeah. from things that he, you know, should know about, and the realization, the, the revelation came when he wanted to search out 
and he got a chance to see this stuff for himself and he kind of figured it out yeah so, yeah i mean he's yeah. got this idea i mean as an 18 year old he's got certain ideas about masculinity what it is to be a man and sort of been yeah. defined by by an absent father he just remembers this, yeah. this cool guy who he thinks his mom chased to baseball yeah good yeah. good guy and i think mm -hmm. um you know i think the film in a pretty sly way it deals with sort of gender politics a little bit mm -hmm. sort of the way that men and women you know as teenagers yeah. interact and the way they interact as teenagers isn't that different or <laughs> doesn't have to be in the way they interact as adults for better right. or worse and this is a kid that has a real gut check during the course of the film and everything that he you know believes about his dad about what is to be a man is kind of thrown thrown for a loop yeah you know, i like that part where you didn't you, the film came you had to let him discover this all himself yeah. uncle you see your dad yeah. you can figure it out yourself instead of telling from a young age this is what he did, blah, 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 because he could have went the other way as far as being really, really crazy with the women and stuff. Yeah, and I mean, you know, to play his dad, we were so excited to have Kyle Chandler from Friday Night Lights. Yes, you know, who's, yes. So I love, yes. you know, I think a lot of America loved his coach Taylor for five years, who just played this, like, the greatest dad, the greatest mm -hmm. coach. And, you know, so when we needed a part for an absentee, narcissistic father, yeah. it was <laughs> great to sort of th uh, throw on its head sort mm -hmm. of, like, people's notion of what he is as, as a performer and, um, he just made the film feel incredibly real. Who wouldn't when that guy is their dad, and then he's not such a great, great dude? Right. It's like, oh no. Cause I, I mean, and the film touches on so many. I mean, a lot of folks are going to definitely relate to the whole because a certain part in their life, they might have been one of those particular characters. Some have grown out. Some have kind of older versions of you know, big man on campus. They have nothing. Yeah. I mean, I think a lot of movies like about people that are teenagers, they're one of two extremes. Either they're really, either they want to try to be real, so they're just kids doing hardcore drugs, yeah. and like yeah. raping each other, you know what I mean, or, yeah. or yeah. gangbangers, or whatever yeah. it is, and they just try to like shock you, or they're just totally sentimental, and they've like kind of neutered the characters, and they just kind of sing and dance, and they're wide-eyed, and it's very Disney. Um, and you know, and I think the truth is, for a lot of people, it's somewhere between. Like high school can be a really, really lonely, traumatic time in your life. Yes, it can. And it also, for a lot of people, 18 was the best time in your life. And that's sort of, it's a really bittersweet time and it's a really complicated time when you're, you haven't really chosen your environment. You're there because you live in a town so you've been zoned into this school. You haven't, the right. friends that you've chosen are the people that are in your school. Right. You haven't really gotten to define yourself as an individual. So yes. it's, you know, um, so we hope to sort of, it's a complicated time we hope to depict that, honestly. It's real good. Oh, Truth or dare, have you had your heart broken as in some of, the, some of the films, some people do get their hearts kind of broken down, so. Yes, I have. Ah, okay. I don't think he wants to talk about that. But I'm happily, I'm happily married now, so, ah. so it, it ended well for me. <laughs> <laughs> we like it. James Ponsley, dude, thank, thank you. you, man. Thank you Thanks so much. Thanks a lot. Thanks a lot, bro.